welcome to Crafty Adults Knit for Beginners. I am very excited to have you all joining us virtually tonight. Um, I'm going to introduce you to our very special uh, guests that we have um, teaching this evening. Um, but before we get, uh, get started, I do want to just mention um, Crafty Adults is a monthly uh, webinar series that we have uh, where we learn a new creative project, um, usually one that can be uh, completed in about one hour. And sometimes we host a local artist to um, do the class. Sometimes I teach it. Um, we always are open for suggestions. So if you have anything you're interested in learning, um, you can always feel free to reach out to the library and we're happy to take your suggestions. Um, but this evening we're going to be knitting. So I want to welcome a local yarn store owner, uh, Brigitte Pika, and she is going to um, tell us a little bit about herself, and then we're going to get started. Moving over to you, Brigitta. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to Knitting 101. My name is Brigitte Pika, and I've lived here in Champaign Urbana for 40 years. So I am an immigrant. I came from uh, Germany, and uh, all sorts of things I did with my life here. So I also founded uh, Campus Middle School for Girls, and all these girls knit. <laughs> they, knitting questions came first in anything they wanted. So, um, but people always want to know how I learned how to knit. And I learned it from my grandmother. Um, a lot of people learn it from family members, mostly grandmothers. Um, so my grandmother made a big ball and she hid candies in there. And in 1954, it was like gold. Candies were like gold. And so I knitted very fast to get to those candies. So that's what she did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love hearing stories like that. <laughs> okay, so um, Brigitta owns a yarn store here in Urbana, um, for those of you joining from outside of the local area, we are in Champaign, Illinois, and Brigitta owns a yarn store in Urbana, Illinois, and we are going to take a little virtual tour of her store. Obviously, we can't all go there, um, but we do want to welcome you into her store, so I'm going to share my screen with you, and we are going to take a little tour of Close Knit in Urbana.
Now that we've visited close knit, uh, we're going to go ahead and start knitting. So next up, let's see what supplies you need to uh, work on your first knitting project. Supplies that you will need for this knitting class are size 13 knitting needles. These are um, some that we picked up used. A darning needle, a pair of scissors, and a nice chunky or bulky weight yarn. You could use something that is more of a worsted weight, but if you're a beginning knitter, we really recommend that you get a nice chunky yarn as it will make the um, knit stitches look really beautiful and it's honestly just a lot easier to work with uh, when you're starting out. So let's get started. All right, today we're going to learn how to do a slip knot. We'll also learn how to cast on. Then we'll learn how to do the actual knitting, the knit stitch. And then we will uh, finally finish with how to cast off, which is how to end um, and finish your project. Okay, here comes the slip knot. <laughs> you make a circle. The top yarn will go underneath and you pull it out and pull on both strings. Okay, let me do this over again. Make a circle, put the top yarn into the circle and pull. Okay. Shall I do it over again? Hi everybody, video editing Laura here to share with you that we found a different way to demonstrate how to do a slip knot. So we wanted to include that in this video. So the next clip that you'll see is going to be uh, Brigitte teaching you how to do a different style of slip knot than we originally taught. Um, it is a lot easier to see on camera. So yeah, um, we found a new way how to teach a slip knot over Zoom. Um, you need your index finger and you put it around this way twice. Then you take this one and put it over top of the first one. And then you take this one and you put it all the way over your fingernail and you have a slip knot. Okay, and now back to our regularly scheduled webinar. This is the circle. The yarn which was on top goes underneath. You grab it with your finger and then you pull on both strings and that's how you get your slip knot okay and then you can pick it up and put it on the needle on one needle because now you need to do the cast on cast on is also called bind on and so on but cast on is the most um the most obvious one, you know, so you're casting on 11 stitches. And um, when you, we're using a very simple cast on, but it works, yeah. So when you, uh, later on, you can learn the uh, different cast ons. There are about 15 different cast ons, cast ons. And, uh, but you can do that later, yeah. So at least you know this one. This is called the E loop, and you put, your yarn, which is connected to your to your ball of yarn, you put it on your thumb, put it around and cross it over. Does that make sense? And then you go into this loop and pull. You put your thumb into that, you cross it over into this little space you pull it tight. Not too tight, just right. The yarn needs and to you can move. interrupt. Brigida, can you put your your hands closer to your body? Okay, like so. Yeah, that, that's good, because they're not seeing right. it once you go in. Yeah, okay. So this is the E-loop. You put it over your thumb. It needs to be connected to your yarn. And then you cross over. Wait. Forget him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so you, you do it like this. 
you see my thumb now. And you go into that little spot right there and you let go of the thumb and pull tight. Okay. You pull it over your thumb and you go into that little crossover space. You put your needle in and you pull tight on the needle. Then your thumb gets involved. You cross over and you are going into that space and pull tight on the needle. Your thumb into your space, let go and pull tight. Thumb into your space after crossing over and here. So you pull your thumb right in there. It's always ready. Wonderful. And, and I want to remind everybody, um, you're going to hear me continue to pop in throughout this instruction. Um, we have a whole hour for this and we are, we're doing a, we picked a really basic activity to start with for a reason. We've got time. If you're feeling rushed right now, take a moment. It's, it's going to be fine. We have quite a while. We're going to go over the cast on a few more times. Um, so at, we know it's like, can be challenging to learn like live on a webinar because you can't pause and test it yourself. So we understand it might be a little challenging, especially since we have so many first time knitters out there. Um, Melissa wants to know how many cast on she, uh, they should have on their needle. A 12. 12. Okay. So. Um, she's going to keep going with our cast on just to demonstrate it. Um, and then why don't you all just let us know in the chat? Um, I really would appreciate it if we had a lot of people let us know just so we're, we feel comfortable moving on to the next step. Um, let us know when you've got 12 cast ons and you're ready to go. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I can do it as long as you want me to. So you put it around your thumb, you cross over, you go into that little space. Now I'm better <laughs> and you pull tight. For some <laughs> reason, I don't go, it's not in the middle. I don't understand why. If you want me to um, pop over to your, your station and readjust the camera, I can. Yeah, that would okay. be great. Okay, yeah. you guys continue casting on. It sounds like we've got a lot of people who are actually done with cast on. So I am so proud of you. Um, you all are awesome. Okay, I'm going to uh, pause my video and, and pop over and get the camera set up a little bit better. So, Thea, why don't you chat with our guests while we do that? That's what I was about to say. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yes, your slip knot does count as one in this project. Some people yes. do not, but it does count. So, you have your cast on and then you cast on 11, but a 12 total of the loops that are on your needle. For some reason, I think maybe we can move that thing a little bit. Because I think they didn't see the, the thumb motion. Yeah, that's better. Oh, is that for you? That looks good. Yeah. This is your marker with your markers on it. So this is your marker here. Never go past your yarn. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Okay. And so that's better too. Is that good? Yeah. Move around and do a couple cast ons. I just want to see how it looks. Is that comfortable for you all? Yeah. Rikita, someone is asking, is it possible to cast on backwards in the direction? It's, is, is the direction important? No, I don't think I I have done it backwards. Yeah, this um, is, the way that she's doing it is just, it's the easiest cast on. Yeah, there's no backwards. Yeah. Is she a left-hander? Oh, I didn't ask. Uh, Catherine, are you a left-hander? Yeah, 
that looks better. No, she's she's a right-hander, so she's okay. just baffled. So yeah, this if we try it again, because this camera angle is great. Yeah, good. That is better. Yeah. Uh, do, does she want me to do the slip knot again? I'll see. Catherine, did you want her to do the slip knot again? Thanks no, she's okay with the cast on. Okay. Or with the slip knot. It's a slip knot, okay. So here comes the slip knot, and here's the cast on again. You involve your thumb, you hold it with your uh, fingers, you cross the yarn over, and you go into that little space, and you pull. Bring it, bring your, bring your hands back, Brigitta. There you go. It's. I wish you guys could see the way that the camera works for us. I. It's hard to understand why it would be so easy to get out of frame, but it is. <laughs> From doing this a lot, I know. <laughs> okay. So you involve your, your thumb, you make the little triangle, you go into that triangle, you let go of your thumb, and you pull into the little space, and you pull into the little space and you pour. Okay. Should I continue doing it? Yeah, I think um, from what, what we heard earlier, there was a lot of people ready. Thea just put a little chat out to see if we're ready to move on. Um, I think we should be good to start knitting in a couple minutes, but we'll just see what if we get any responses back. And again, I very much appreciate everyone's patience as we've had some technical, technical fun this evening. No replies. So I'd say let's go ahead and, and start with our knitting. Let's get our second needle involved here. Yeah. So here you go. Um, Make sure you are not knitting with the short end. Make sure it is connected to the ball of yarn. Okay. And uh, for this uh, part, you need to learn a little children's rhyme. So I will do it first and then maybe we can repeat it together. You, no, I cannot hear you, but I'm, I think you can do it. We're gonna it put is. your, lower your hands again. Okay. Um, that I'm sorry. I, it's all right. <laughs> so the rhyme goes like that. Into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. And you will see how it helps you when you are doing it. Yeah. So I just uh, do it first. Into the window. The first row is always a little difficult, you know. Around the back. Then you guide that string a little bit out the window and off jumps Jack. You have to use your finger to pull it back into the window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. That is one movement into the window. Then you hold it with your two, with your left hand around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Into the window. Are you into the window? Around the back. That's what your string is doing on the right hand side. And out the window, and off jumps Jack. So you basically are putting all the left hand uh, uh, stitches on the right hand side, and you knit them at the same time. Yeah, into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Into the window, around the back, and hold on to the string a little bit. Out the window, and off jumps Jack. 
into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Into the window. It's always the same movement. Into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Into the window. Your yarn goes around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Into the window. Around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. Any responses? So far, um, everybody's why. I think everyone's everyone's attempting. We had someone I wanted to say. Um, Lisa said earlier, it, I, I just loved it. Let me get back to it. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, we've got more chats coming in. Hold on. She said about casting on, she said, too bad that's not all knitting was, and then I would have it. And I totally understand what you mean. Um, and then Thea asked if every how everyone was doing, were they knitting? And we had a couple responses. We had, yeah, oh wow, we've got good. We've got an oof. So like we might need to see it again. Okay. Um, and again, so I, I just wanna re repeat, we have got a lot of time. We are just going to be working on some knitting. Okay, we've got Katerina is wondering, are there any suggestions on how to hold the needles in an efficient way? So let's yes. talk about holding the needles. Yeah, uh, you hold them as if you are riding a bicycle. Or if you like to play the piano, this is how you, how you hold them. This way. Do you see it? So don't do it like a pencil. Don't do that. Just as if you were riding a bicycle. That's the best way of doing it. Okay. I've never heard that. And that makes so much sense. Like you're holding mm -hmm. onto the handlebars. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And and I will say too, I am a very novice knitter. Um, but it does take a little while for it to feel right. Like it feels kind of clunky and awkward in your hands when you're first starting um when you're first starting anything but I think with knitting and crocheting just yarn crafts it feels a little clunky so don't like be afraid to mess around we really do have a lot of time for questions and for um for Brigitte it's just going to keep on knitting we're only going to be doing a knit stitch this evening so we've got plenty of time Okay. Melissa has asked if you can go around the back part again real slow for her Okay. So once you go in, into how you're the it, window, how you're it then you hold it here and it goes around the right hand needle, around there. Then you hold it and you pull it through. That's the out the window part. And then off it goes. Off jumps Jack. Okay. Into the window, around the back. <laughs> out the window and off jumps Jack. Lisa, Lisa says Jack is not jumping off for her. So <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see Jack again. Okay. Into the window. It's like uh going some a burglar is going into uh, the window. <laughs> and then around the back. Brigitte, yeah, yeah, there you go. Roll your hands again. Thank yeah. Out the window. Let me do this over again. Into the window. And this is the around the back. So let's do this over again. Around the back. You basically turn it around the right hand needle. Right. And you off jump stack and you need a little bit of um, pressure from your right uh, index finger to pull it over. Into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jump stack. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. 
or it depends on where your stitches are. Into the window, around the back, out the window, and off jumps Jack. I hope uh, Jack is jumping off now. <laughs> And someone asked um, if you offer classes at this time. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go to my website and uh, give me a call. That's the best thing. So, so tell us, since we're on this wonderful webinar, tell us about um, how you do classes. Um, are you doing like a one-on-one -on -one meeting? Are you, are you going to do it virtually right now? Yeah, there was not very much interest up to now. Yeah, but if people want to do that, that is fine. And I can do like two people at the, at the time. We have a big table and I can place them um, so that they are six feet away. So two Perfect. people I can do together, right? Perfect. Or one and one. Awesome. And, and for anybody who doesn't know, um, uh, close knit is very easy to get to. It's on Springfield in Urbana, um, very close to where Strawberry Fields and World Harvest are. She's right in that area, so right very across close. the street. Yeah, right across the street. Not in the same uh, building. I should clarify. Yeah. So, who has completed one row? Yeah, let's hear. Have you completed a row? Where are you at? Are you still struggling with your first row? If you are, I get it. <laughs> Ooh, we've got we've got some rows completed. Yay! That's great. Wonderful. So when you turn it over, you make sure that all your stitches are on the left hand needle. They're all on the left hand needle. And you push with your right hand needle, okay? Okay, I'm gonna read this question out loud because I think it's gonna mm -hmm. be helpful. There's two. Um, so first, uh, let me get to it. The chat box is so small on my computer. I have a very hard time seeing everything. Zoom problems, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have a comment that um, the stitches are either too tight or too loose. So can you speak a little bit about tension? Yeah. Um, the tension is uh, easy to learn uh, on this method. There are different cast-ons and there are different ways of knitting. So I personally uh, use the continental method. Um, you have, you don't throw the yarn, you pick it. And that is a better way of doing it in general. But when you are an adult, it is very hard to learn the tension. So that's why we are doing the English method. Yeah. And this is how just about everybody knits around here. You get a lot of help when you ask other people. So it's not a good idea to do continental right now. Yeah. So this, the tension, um, it's like with the three little bears. It's not too big, not too too loo uh, not too loose or too tight. It has to be right in the middle. So uh, try to do that. Don't do it too tight or too loose. And the problem is the tension on the string. That is the problem. So if you do it into the window, if you make this part the, around the um, back very tight, then your stitch will become too tight and you pull on it. Don't pull on it. Let it go natural. Into the window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. Okay, so don't pull too tight on the string. So the yarn needs to move a little bit on that second needle. Because if you do it too tight, you cannot um, get in there. Then it's too tight here. And if it's too loose, it falls off. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's difficult to do. That is the, the problem. And you always do the same thing over again. So the knit stitch is not hard to learn. Yeah. 
Yeah, when I first started knitting, I had a lot of difficulties with tension. And I would often just be knitting way too tight. And so it was really hard mm -hmm. um, to move between the needles and actually do the rows because I was struggling to pull the stitches off. So um, tension is, is a little difficult to, to get the hang of sometimes. I will say this, the way that I learned at the beginning is that I actually let go of my yarn when I went around the back and then I let it go a little bit so it wasn't that tight. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, but you have to hold on to the string a little bit. You yeah. need to guide it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you need it when you want to go around the back. Yeah. Into back, out, and over. Okay, and I, I want to pop in to, oh, go ahead, Brigitte. I'm so sorry. Yeah, give yourself a little room on your ball. Pull on that uh, yarn a little bit so you have enough yarn to, um, to knit with. Then you don't have to pull on the string so much connected to the ball. Move. Okay. I'm gonna have you move, move your hands a little closer to you here, oh, closer yeah. to your lap. There I don't you go. know why is that just always. Well, it, it was just funny. We moved the cam. It was like the, when you're casting on, you needed to be closer. And now that you're knitting, you're a little further away. We can adjust the camera again. I mean, this is our workshop. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think, I think you kind of answered um, one of the questions here but I'm going to repeat it in case. So Melissa says, and, and I was, okay. I can't seem to get in into the window around the back thing. I just keep undoing the stitch. Okay. Um, just push in, push in with your right hand needle, push in. And then you go around the back and you go from your right hand side all the way around. And then you hold on to it, you guide it, and you pull it through the stitch and up. Okay. So, so she I also, she says here too, she can't tell um, if it's because, I'm going to try to read this again. I think it's because I can't tell if I'm actually going into the window or if I'm pushing my right needle into the wrong part of the stitch. So... Let's demonstrate that one more time. You're like going into the loop around the needle, right? Yeah. yeah. So you push in here. Push in here. From the front. Not from the back or anything. Just from the front. In there, you hold it. You hold on with your thumb of your left hand. You hold both needles. Then you go around and then you pull through. Can you do it with me? In. Around. And out and over. In. Around. Hold it so that you guide the string. And over. That's when he goes out the window and jumps off. He jumps off to the other needle. Okay, I'm going to pop in um, for a couple other questions here. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have a question that says, what do you do if you have run out of yarn? My guess is that you started knitting with the, the tail end. instead of the ball of yarn. So, there's two different ends. Um, and then we also have a question about demonstrating a cast on again. Yeah. Okay, we can start over. Okay, so sa she says, okay, used it all at the cast on. Um, what she's asking is that she's knitted the row and she needs to turn her work. Yeah. You oh. Need, so how does she turn her work after she's worked all of her 12 stitches? Okay, you put them in the needle with all the stitches on in your left hand. This is the left hand side needle. Okay. 
Let me just finish this one. Yeah, and then pull your hands down a little bit, Brigida. I think right. Laura's going to come over there and readjust for you. Oh. Yeah. Why I have so many problems so sad. Okay, so we will start over with the um, uh, with the cast on, or should I do the um, should I do the um, the e loop, or should I start out with the with the knot slip knot? Just um, just a slip knot. Let's start. Are you gonna you're gonna start doing a cast on again demo? Yeah. Yeah, just start with the slip knot and then do the we'll just start from the kind of like the beginning just to go over that again. Um it's good for everyone to just watch her demonstrate again because it, it's it's muscle memory too. So just yeah. watching her is helpful. Okay, slip knot. We take a little bit of yarn that needs to be connected to your ball. You make a circle. The yarn on the top goes underneath. You grab it and you pull with both strings. Make a circle. Then you hold it, put it underneath and pull it. circle, top yarn goes underneath and you pull with both strings. This one did not work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Happens. There you go underneath and you pull with both strings. That means that if you slip it, it's gone. <laughs> so this is the slip knot. And when you take one of your needles, you put it on there and pull it sort of a little tight, but not very, not so tight that you can't move it. You just, just a little bit. So now you're doing the E loop and you're going to involve your thumb. You take your fingers and hold these three hang on, there and there. You have two fingers and you hold the rest of the string on that side. And you go into that little circle here and you pull tight. You pull with your thumb. You go into the circle. You let go of the circle with your thumb and you have the next stitch on. There. Go into the circle. Okay, and you're done. Maybe it's a good idea to start out with holding uh, the string with your three fingers and then you involve your thumb, go around, you go into that little triangle there and you go tight. Wonderful and I'm just going to respond. I think Joan left but um, just for everyone else if you saw we will be um, posting the recording to our YouTube channel, which is um, you can find at um, champagne.org, our website. If you scroll to the bottom, there is a link to our YouTube channel. You can also just search Champagne Public Library on YouTube. Um, I don't plan on emailing everyone when it goes live. Uh, I will try. Normally, I get these up and running within a few days. Um, 
Now I will say I did miss the intro of this particular webinar, so I may end up re-recording that before we <laughs> actually post it. So I would hope by this weekend we'll have it ready to go. The recording. Okay, what can... Um, Kate wants to know, what can I do if I messed up a stitch in the middle of the row? When she's uh, cast on, when she cuts on. Let's find oh. out. Let's find out. Cast on or when you're knitting, Kate? Just knitting. Okay. Um, at this point, if you've never knitted before, you just let it go and you knit the next one. Okay, you have a little buttonhole there. That's fine. Just knit the next one. <laughs> we are not looking for perfect. We are looking for knitting. And you have to uh, do it over and over again. Like uh, what Laura said, it has to get in your muscles. So just let it go and continue knitting. Okay. As the New Yorkers would say, forget about it. <laughs> 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 no, that was embarrassing. I'm sorry I did that, everybody. <laughs> so shall we continue with the knit stitch yeah let's keep knitting so we're at about eight o'clock I do just I'm kind of like our moderator here so I just want to keep everyone um in line um so we're at about eight o'clock so I think what we'll do is just continue with some basic knitting the basic knit stitch um for another about 10 minutes um uh, Brigitta does want to show you how to, what's called binding, um, binding off or casting, casting off. off. Yeah. Um, so that you can see how to finish, how to actually take your knitting off the needle. So we want to make sure we get that um, in recording. Hi, Barb. Um, yes, we are recording this session. It will be on our YouTube channel. And since we've got several folks asked about emailing out the recording, I will go ahead, just email a link to everybody who was on the registration list. So yes, we'll, we'll go ahead and just email you a link when it's live. So we're going to knit for about 10 more minutes. Now's the time to ask some um, knitting questions, if you have them, um, ask us to, to show some things again, if you want, um, before we get to the, the final cast off. Because often people want to know, how can I cast off? Because I know this is as long as I want it, but I don't know how to cast off. Um, so this is why we are going to include that here. So I have uh, knitted one row and I want to cast off. So you need two stitches, just knit two stitches, put it all in the left hand and uh, knit two stitches. Yeah, so everybody go ahead and pause what you're doing if you're if you're knitting. Let's just watch Brigitte cast off right now, just so you can kind of see what she's doing. If you'd like to cast off and you've got one row, go for it. Um, yeah, you just have so to have you one row. See. Yeah. Okay, so you have two stitches on your right-hand needle. All the rest are on your left-hand needle, and you're working with your left-hand needle. The very first one on your right-hand needle is the one which you have to pull out. You pull it out and then you pull the second stitch through it. Okay, so you need to knit another one. You have two stitches on your right hand side. You pull the first one toward you and you pull the second one through there. Okay. Knit the next one. And then you pull the second, the first one over top of the second one. And when you see that, it makes a little braid on the top. That means these stitches are cut off. Okay. So you stab it in there, you make another stitch. And off it goes. Then you pull the first one toward you, so it's nice and big, 
and then you pull the second one through there. That can be loose, that's fine. Okay, one more time. You have to have two stitches. And you pull toward you and pull the other one through it. You have only two stitches, so that's fine. Okay. First one toward you, make it nice and big and pull the other one through. Pull the first stitch out and pull the next one over. So we have a question coming in here. Um, do you have to cast off all of the stitches or do you just start casting off with two? So you, I'll go ahead and start answering then I'll let her um, forget to take over. But yeah, so what she's doing when she's casting off is you're going to end up casting off every single stitch and it's going to take, uh, it's going to make a nice edge so that your project comes like off the needle. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you knit another one and then you pull it through and you have this wonderful edge on the top. There, here we go. <laughs> you can even hold your, pull your, um, hold your hands a little higher up. So we're getting a little closer to the camera so they can really see that edge. Wonderful. There, you can see it now. Yeah, so that's what it should look like. Lisa, Lisa, you're cracking me up. She just said, I remember why I don't knit. <laughs> it takes some time. It takes some time. It's not, um, you know, it's just like with a lot of things. If you don't have enough practice, then you cannot get good at it. Yeah. But you have to put it into your muscles. You need to know what to do next. And in, an, in a half an hour or 45 minutes, it's really hard to do that. Yeah. So I hope you will keep knitting because uh, as we saw in this uh, pandemic, this is what everybody could do at home. They could sit down and knit. And later on, you can also watch television while you knit. It's wonderful. <laughs> you can knit all sorts of things. So I... I, I <laughs> Lisa also said... Couldn't we just slide it off? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> then you are undoing it. Yeah. <laughs> Knitting isn't like macrame, where like when you're macrameing, you're like actually tying knots. I mean, it, it's kind of like a knot, but you have to have that final knot to really hold it in place. It's not the yeah. same. I mean, I know you didn't compare it to macrame, but I'm just, in case anyone out there is kind of thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, so if you are more interested in a private lesson, I would be happy to give that to you uh, because uh, it would be so sad if you've made an attempt and then you don't follow through. So. Yeah, everyone, like, uh, I really, we do encourage you if you're local, which I think a lot of folks in this class are local, seeing some of the names. Um, I do recognize some of your names. I don't know your faces, but I recognize your names from Crafty Adults. Um and yeah, we have, I mean, Brigitte is local. She has a store. She is here. She is so talented um, and knowledgeable about knitting and honestly, one of the best teachers that I think we, in this area, um, she was even just showing me because I learned a different, a different, what did I learn? Continental? You, you, yeah. Right. Yeah, You're, so I, I do the different style of knitting. And so even before this class, I sat down with her and she was showing me how to do English styles. She's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Um, and you definitely want to make an appointment to stop by her store if you, if you feel comfortable. Yeah, no problem. Barb, Barb wants to know, um, how much do you charge for a private lesson? So um, my private lessons are connecting the yarn, the needles and everything for $39. So wonderful. My, my time. So um, then you get the needles and you get a big ball like that, right? Okay. And, and the yarn at her store is lovely. 
yeah. This is <laughs> this is chunky yarn. Uh, chunky yarn is a great yarn. This is from a company from South America, and just touching it is so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it is really a great yarn, and that's what you get with your uh, with your price of the thirty nine fifty. All right, I'm going to stop you for just for a sec. A lot of people are not knowing what to do with that last stitch after you cast off the two and you just have one on the, the yes. stitch at the end. I was what waiting for that. Okay. I was waiting for that. Um, because, let me just... Um, okay. We will pretend. And this is... Uh, continental method because that goes a little bit faster. So do as she says, but not as she does. Don't look yeah. at this quick knitting she's doing. And I will show you. So now you have the last stitch on there, in there. And by the way, it is all the same. The outcome of continental or English style is the same. So don't worry about it. You put it around and you suddenly have this, oh no, it didn't work. I should have undone the whole area here. Hang on for a second. I have to undo all of those first because otherwise, pardon me? Was muted. This is good for them to see. Yeah, okay. So right now, tell me, I, I mean, I know you, you're trying to move quickly, but tell me what you're doing. Walk us through what you're doing right now. I know you're making your, uh, tell us. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to um, make the last stitch of the row I'm casting off. But what are you doing right now? I'm casting off. Oh, okay. I see. So you're just quickly uh, in, doing in, it. I'm quickly doing it uh, because this is as if you are doing it in the continental side. And that goes faster. Okay. I see. I see. I'm sorry to confuse everyone. I was confused. Yeah. And so don't do what I do. Like she said, like Laura says. So... So here's the last stitch. You pull one over top of the other one. And this is what you have. You have a string and you have your scissors and you cut your yarn. And all you, you have to do is you pull your yarn through and then you're done. This is what it looks like. So I do it over again. Come forward. <laughs> okay. Here is the yarn. Here is the last stitch. And you cut your yarn already. So all you have to do is you pull it out. <laughs> Isn't that fun? It doesn't work. That's the way it goes when you're teaching a class, right? Yeah. Problem was that you can't undo the last one without knitting it. So we've got a little bit of time. I'm going to rec if it's okay, Brigitte, can we go over? Um, can we just have you go over casting off again? Yeah, sure. Um, and that way we'll just do a let's the next time we'll just go straight through and you'll. Um, walk us through how what you're doing again. Yeah. 
Okay, you have two stitches and I'm just finishing uh, the last stitch here. And you pull this over top of this one and then you just pull the yarn through. So the last stitch is no problem. The only thing you have to remember is that you cut your yarn. Okay, so now we are going to start it over again. So I'll start the whole series over again. It's probably a better idea. Yeah, you know, have a, yeah, that sounds good. We've got, we've still got about 15 minutes. So um, we'll kind of watch you just from start to finish, go through again. Um, okay, so we will start with the slip knot. We will make a little circle. You pull the yarn from the top underneath. You pull on both strings. Then you take one of your knitting needles, you make it tight and the yarn of the, of the yarn, which is connected to your string, to your ball of wool, uh, you put in your left hand, you hold it with your, with your middle finger and your ring finger and uh, the little one. So, and then you hold it like that, your index finger sort of hangs around there. So then you take your, your thumb and you go through the little triangle and pull tight. You involve your thumb, you go into the triangle and you go tighter. Your thumb, And after a while, your, your thumb will just do that. It will go faster and it can go slower. So while she's continuing showing us cast on again, um, maybe you can just talk a little bit. We had someone ask a little ways back, but I didn't want to interrupt um, what we we're working on. Um, they asked, how does one match the yarn to the size of the needles. Yeah. Um, the needles are not in millimeters, right? So they have different um, numbers here in the United States. So uh, when you have a thicker yarn, you need to start out with uh, like nine, 10, 11, or 13. But it depends on how thick it is. If you have worsted weight yarn, this is a number four in uh, Hobby Lobby or other places. Number four is always worsted weight yarn. And that's what a lot of people knit with. So four is fine. And you can do eight or nine, um, uh, eight or nine uh, numbers with that. So no millimeters, okay? So, so I'm going to knit this very fast now. So if you, if you didn't catch it. Let's go, um, if you move your hands a little to the right and then walk us through that rhyme again. We want to hear it. You want to do what? Oh, so the rhyme? Yeah. In, into the uh, window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. Into the window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. Into the window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. Into the window, around the back, out the window and off jumps Jack. I'm almost there. Into the window. Around the back. Out the window. Off jumps Jack. So did everybody get it? Yeah, Maybe. I think I think it seems like people were um 
it seemed like we we had some questions uh, stop after a little while, so I think people were getting it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're doing the cast off again. That's what you wanted, yeah? Yeah, let's do the cast off, um, and let's just go straight through. Um, just walk, talk us through what you're doing, and and I won't interrupt you for any of this. We'll just let okay. you kind of go for it. So you need to have two stitches on your right hand needle. Then you want to make the little braid on the top. You pull on your first needle, first stitch, and you pull it through the second one, or you pull the second one through the first. Okay, so you need to stitch one more stitch, then you pull on the first one, and you pull it through the second one. Into the window again, and you put the first one. <coughs> into the window, on the back, etc. So then you pull out, you pull it through here and you are done. I'm gonna have you move your hands a little to the right again, slowly veering off. I don't know how that always happens. <laughs> Two stitches on your needle. <coughs> I think I need some water. You pull it toward you and you pull the second stitch through the first. Pull the first stitch open so that the second stitch can go Sew it here. Okay, and now comes the last stitch. You pull, and this is the last stitch where I would cut the cut the yarn. And you see this wonderful little braid on the top. Perfect. That looks so nice. Um, you can see right. it here too. Yeah, well, bring it, bring it forward. Let's see it. Yeah, why don't you show us your swatches here too, just to give people an idea um, yeah, of what so, it looks like. How many, so, how many rows did you do for those, by the way? Um, I don't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten rows. Um, this is garter stitch. Okay, so here we are. This is called garter stitch. Like a lot of people were doing garters for weddings, okay? And this does not roll. Uh, when you use a different pattern, it rolls at this, at, on the side, but this one doesn't. Okay, so it's garter stitch and you knit every row. That means two stitches make one row. Two rows make one of those uh, little rows up top. Squiggles or whatever. Yeah. Kind of like squiggly. Yeah. Right. But you need two of them. Um, because otherwise you can see it in there, there is one row which is sort of like knitted. Little knitted like pearl stitch. But you can't understand that yet. It's too early. <laughs> <laughs> too early. Um, yeah. But uh, so you knit every row, every row. And this is what you end up with garter stitch. This is a pattern called garter stitch. And when you, um, you can make a scarf with this. Our camera got bumped here. So yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, you can knit a scarf with this pattern already. So once you've understood this one, this is the basics. Then there's the pearl stitch, which you will learn later. But once you know this one really well, it's very easy to learn the second one. 
uh, and knitting has only two stitches. So that's easy, you know? So, um, so I have a question for you. Um, okay. Before we close out, we're getting close to our time. Um, so I want to know um, for folks here who have just started their their knitting journey, or maybe they um, they're wanting to give up right now. So like some people don't know if knitting is for them. Tell us what you would do next. So we're here. We've just learned how to knit maybe a few rows. What do you what do you recommend that everybody kind of work on maybe in the next week or so if they, if they want to keep it up? Yeah you do have to learn how to do the knit stitch perfectly. Yeah, and that's the way you do that is to knit a scarf. Uh, by that time, you can watch television then. Yeah, you can test yourself. Can you knit uh, while you watch television? Then you can do it. And then you learn the purl stitch. So. I love that. You are so correct. Once you can knit without looking at what you're doing, I, yeah. I agree with you. Then you're ready to learn something else. Until you can do that, just keep knitting. Yeah, right. Exactly. It doesn't matter if you have like a little hole here. It doesn't matter. Just keep on going. You know, you, sometimes you make a buttonhole there. You put <laughs> a button there later on or you unravel it. And or you, you go to Virginia and you ask her, hey, how can I fix this? And she'll show you a little cheat. Yeah. Right. Or your edges will start going like this because you increase right. the increase. <laughs> yeah, that happens too. Um, but just keep knitting. As long as you get it into your muscles, that's really important to do the stitch and put it into your muscles. That's really important to, to do that. And later on, you learn the pearl stitch and then you learn how to make... Um, uh, a, a hat. How does a hat? Yeah, you make a hat. That's a lot of people love that when they are advanced enough to make a hat. That you can make hats for other people. You can, you know, have five of them in different colors for yourself. <laughs> so hats are a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what I I think would would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for coming. We've got some folks leaving right now, it sounds like. So we're going to get ready to close out as well. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming um, this evening. Oh, someone says in here, you can turn the swatches into washcloths. You're Absolutely. Um, so I want to, before we leave, though, I do want to um, give you a couple minutes. Normally, we do invite people to share screens. I don't, I don't think we're going to do that tonight. Um, I have a feeling not everybody has a piece that they're like ready to show and that's, t that's cool. Um, I also just don't know that we have the time. Um, so I want to check in with you all. If you have any last minute, uh, questions for any of us, um, I'd love for you to raise your hand if you'd like, we'd be happy to unmute you so you can talk. Um, if you want to just add something in the chat. Um, that would be wonderful as well. If you don't have anything to ask us, that's cool. We're going to banter for a few more minutes, and then I think we'll um, head out. We'll see if anybody has anything to say. But yes, thank you so much for coming to uh, this this event. Um, I hope that this has helped you if you weren't sure how to start knitting kind of jump over that hump there where you're like a little bit anxious about it. Um, it's, it's such a fun hobby and I didn't get a chance to say this today and I say it almost every time. We think that taking time to, to make something is really important and it's a wonderful way to unwind um, and relax. I know it can be starting a new hobby is hard and maybe it doesn't sound relaxing, but you're going to get there. Um, and just at the library, we really think it's important to take the time out of our days to teach things like this, too. So um, thank you so much for, for coming. Thank you to uh, Brigetta for being here. Um, I'm going to actually go over to where Brigetta's at, at in the library, and we're going to get her camera back on unless you guys have any other knitting questions. And we're going we're gonna to say goodbye for the evening. Dia, do we have okay. anybody chatting anything? They do. Great, because I, I I was trying to type it, but I can't get. Uh, who was it? Was it Kathleen? It's like if she was knitting a, 
a scarf, how many stitches? I would just stitch, uh, like cast on how wide you want it. 12 stitches. So 12 for stitches. This, it'll make a little one. But if you yeah. want to make a bigger one, then you would just cast on more. And so you would just knit. No, long. you don't. You just do 12 stitches. And then you knit until the ball, ball is done. Okay. And then you can uh, put it around your neck two times, like I do right now. Well, you can see it. <laughs> They'll see it in one one moment here, everybody. Yeah. Okay, Thea, keep telling us if we have any any other um, qu okay. questions or comments coming in, and I'm gonna hop over. I don't know if Tara is still here, but how should you hold the string in your right hand? I just loop it over my finger and just yeah. let it hold there, and then I just hold it. Yeah, but I do. I do. The, my left hand, I, I. So this is what you can do with that. And it looks pretty good, you know. Doesn't matter if there's a little buttonhole. Nope. It just adds, adds character. Yeah. It's right. made. <laughs> okay. All right. She has a new hobby. So right. we at least got one person. Okay, good. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in to See You Wise TV. We hope you enjoyed the show. This video can be accessed anytime on youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. We hope you will join us again next week for more.